at the time you made Forbidden Zone, after all these years now that you think about the time that you put into it and making it, did you consider the original release a failure? Um, economically, yes. I mean, it bankrupted me and I lost my house. Uh, but artistically, I was glad I did it. At the time that it happened, did you feel that way? or, or Completely glad I did it. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. And so, are you able to talk a little bit about what happened in terms of how it bankrupted you? Or, I mean, just, just maybe... Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't clear the music rights. Uh, the animation cost, although I had a very talented animator, it cost like 20 times what I thought it was going to cost. And, <laughs> you know, I was just starting in real estate and, you know, part-time jobs as a, as a busboy and a cab driver, you know, and I'm forking money in. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, it was like uh, some people go to film school, I just made a film. Have you always done it that way, sort of seat of your pants? And you just jump right in, and that's how you learn the good and the bad? Yeah, how to do yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Did people try to stop you? Uh, it was just economic, oh, only economic. Yeah, I mean, it's scary. You know, that I, I, I had to shoot it in, in starts and stops as I'd get some money. I had a little bit of help from friends and some partners, mostly on my shoulders. Right. And then I'm assuming you, you took out like a second or something in order to, to fund. Yeah. The, okay. And so then. Well, more than that. And then to finally get it released, I had to sign away all control. So I'd, I only got control of the film fully back a few years ago. Oh. A long story. But I only got 100% control of Forbidden Zone a few years ago. So that, what, I'm sorry, what was the time span? 15 years? 40 years. 40 years. Oh, sorry. So, was, the film was done 40 years ago. Wow, 40 years. Okay. <laughs> sorry, it seems like 15 to me. Yeah, okay. yeah. How, how, are you thinking about it every day for the last 40 years? No, I don't think about it at all. Think about the next dinner, the next article. <laughs> What wine we're pairing? Yeah, with? yeah, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. My brother's writing fantastic music that I have going through my head. I know you said music is very... Yeah, and I, I have a very, I'm blessed with a very rich family life. Sure, I'm just, I'm just hoping to get little, little nuggets that we can, you know, give to our audience because there's a lot of people that we watch our stuff that, I'm not saying they haven't been as blessed, but that they want to know how somebody gets to this level. And, and that's kind of what, what we do with Film Courage. So, Well, a, a positive attitude is important, although I don't know how you convey somebody who has a negative attitude to just tell them the words, have a positive attitude. Uh, you know, if you're going to get knocked down, you've got to get back up. Everybody gets knocked down. Everybody gets knocked down. You've just got to get back up and go back at it. Right. So you weren't really thinking about acquiring the rights back? For all this time? No. Uh, someone acquired them, made me a partner. It's a long story, and I only ended up with it recently. <laughs> How would you say the theatrical release of Forbidden Zone, the first one, changed your life? Uh, well, we were in the New Beverly Theater, now owned by Quentin Tarantino, and there was the arson threat and we had to leave. No, it, it didn't change my life. Well, other than losing my house, yeah, that changed my life. But six months later, I had a better house. You know, <laughs> with some real estate partners. Sure. Uh, it, you know, things worked out. It, you know, but again, I had to pick myself up, you know, and go at it again. Yeah, God, if I could give anyone advice, it's tenacity. It's if you're tenacious, your odds are better. The other thing I've learned is you get periodic opportunities and we don't always take advantage of them. We don't always, I, I had a chip on my shoulder with Hollywood for a long time and I was courted by agents and basically, you know, here's my card, knock on no door, suck on no door. I don't need stars, you know, I'll do it my way, whatever, you know. But it was like, uh, I, I can't even tell you a few names that reached out to me. Uh, but now I, I have a, a mellower view, you know, with, with forces in the industry. And then when I had my media company, Buzzing, 
I, I got to see a little bit how things work and how the wheels turn. So it kind of took the chip off my shoulder. Were you able to share uh, how you see things work in the industry? Uh, be aware that opportunities come up and go for it, even if you're going to fail, but go for the opportunities when they come up. Every one of them. Uh, your biggest regret, I've read from people at the end of their lives, was not attempting to do something. Right. Uh, I don't know how many times Walt Disney went bankrupt. Yeah, I, I know that's a, a common um, thing we hear. I mean, because I, I know an actor gets to a point where they say, I don't want to work for free anymore. I want to be treated as a professional. And that makes sense. So uh, I would imagine that's the same for directing theater or a film. Well, I just directed some theater. And uh, when you direct small theater, even if you fill the seats, you're still going to lose money. So that's, uh, although the interesting thing, um, my wife Anastasia is in a theater company, uh, Force of Nature Productions, and they put up one of my plays last year. And in the play, I wrote that there was this quirky band. So for the play, we actually put a band together for the play, and now the band is existing on its own, and they're in my new film, uh, Mambo de Monaco. <laughs> I think I saw them playing, and you were playing the, the drums too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, you know, but I didn't make any money from the, the theater production. You know, we filled our 90 seats, whatever, but you, you don't make money from small theater. Sure, you do it for, it's for the, the love, love of it. it. Mm -hmm. Well, you do art for the love of it. And if you make money, then that's a, a blessing as well. But you're doing it for art. And that should be its own satisfaction.